Hi there and welcome to this video for Senior Physics on Nuclear Physics. In this uh, video we're going to explore um, how we can detect uh, nuclear radiation and the devices that we utilised as, as time progressed for looking at how radiation actually existed. Now the first discovery as we know came with, in uh, 1896 with uh, Henri Becquerel and he was um, studying the, uh, the, the rock um, bait, which ended up being uranium. And what he was doing was taking the uranium and he was taking a photo plate. Now the photo plate was just a normal photographic glass plate which he was wrapping in paper and he was placing the rock on top of the paper and he was placing that whole apparatus in the sunlight. Now he was working on the principle that the sunlight was causing the rock to emit some substance and what he was getting was this shadow which is generated on the plate when he developed the plate and you can see that shadow um, on the top right hand corner of your screen. Now what he didn't realise was that what was being emitted from the, uh, the rock was this, this, this product, this, this radiation. Now it wasn't until he had a rainy day and he actually took um, a sample of the rock and a photo plate all set up and because there was no sunlight he decided not to um, place it in the sun, he put it in a drawer and went off for the weekend, came back up, came back and for some unknown reason he developed the plate. And when he developed the plate he noticed that that same shadow was, um, was present. As a result he determined that it had nothing to do with the sunlight, there was something inside that rock which was actually um, causing this shadow on the photo, um, photo plate. What it ended up being was this idea of radiation. And you can see down in the bottom right hand corner there, we've got this idea of this uranium which is stuck inside, stuck on top of the photo plate in the dark and it's emitting these alpha particles. These alpha particles are then reacting with the photo plate and as a result generating the image that we can see. So that was one of the first discoveries behind detecting the presence of radiation um, in our natural surroundings. Later on, fluorescence was used with Ernest Rutherford. Now, Ernest, Ernest Rutherford basically worked on the ionizing, right, um, ionizing properties of this radiation. And when these, um, this radiation ionizes certain substances like zinc sulfide, diamond, barium, platinum, cyanide, what we get is these flashes, these, these, these product, this production of light. And by counting the amount of um, flashes that you get, will determine the number of, or the, the radioactivity which is present from the particle. More flashes, more radioactivity that particle happens to be. Now, this was very, very tedious because it consisted of looking down a uh, microscope and looking for these individual flashes and counting them. And you can imagine as time goes on, you get tired. You know, it's very, very inaccurate. But it wasn't until um, later on in the 1940s that a, fo a photo multi, multi oh sorry a photo multiplier was introduced which actually allowed to, um, the ability to detect each of these flashes and then use some simple electronics to count those number of flashes per time and then that was related obviously to the radioactivity of the of the substance so here I've, I've, I've been able to pick up a, a little animation which shows that we've got the radiation which is generated here that is then, that radiation causes, if you can see just in here, we get that ionization. Ionization then generates that, that light. That light is then converted into an electrical signal through the photomultiplier, and then it's taken out and counted as an electrical signal using some fancy electronics. We're not going to go into that in any, any great detail. Um, these are the sorts of things that you may use if you're going to university and you, you happen to do any radiation. Um, work, you'll use this insulation counter and literally all it will have is a dial and it will be telling you how many flashes you're getting per second and that will then be linked to the, um, the activity of that radiation sample. So what, what other else was there? Was that there was the electroscope which was used by the Curies. Now um, Marie Curie basically looked at the um, fluorescent salts and, and use the concept again of this ionizing radi radiation. Now what they did was they took an electroscope and they charged up the uh, foil and you can see in the diagram in the bottom right hand corner we've got um, a representation 
of the uh, foil. And you can see the foil uh, is negatively charged and as a result, it repels from the main um, shaft. Now, what she then did was pass the ionizing radiation and what the ionizing radiation did was ionize the air. So as it ionizes the air, we get these positive particles which are generated because we're knocking off these, these electrons. Um, so if these electrons are being knocked off into the atmosphere, we can then get these charged ions which will then be attracted to the negative electroscope. Now, the faster the... Um, so, sorry, as the positive particles hit onto the electroscope, what happens is the negative charges then move towards the positive ions at the top. The result is the leaf will begin to drop down. Now, if you can measure the time it takes for that leaf to drop down, um, you've got an idea of the radioactivity which is going on. Because remember, the radioactivity is what's ionizing the air. By ionizing the air, the faster or the more ionizing ability that radioactive particle has, the more positive particles are going to be generated, the quicker the, electro the negative charges on the electroscope are going to move to those positive charges on the plate, the quicker the leaf is going to go down. So as a result, they were able to work out this rate of collapse of the, the leaf based on the ionizing ability of the radioactive sample. And as a result, that allowed us to work out, if you take various different samples, you can then work out with time um, the radioactivity and the time and how um, the type of particles which are going to be um, generated. Now, from there, we then moved on to the Geiger-Muller tube. Now, we all know about the Geiger-Muller tube. That's basically a tube. And probably what most people understand is it's a tube linked to a box and it clicks. And the more it clicks, the more, the more radioactive the sample is. But what actually happens is it, it again uses this ionizing ability of the radioactive particle. And you can calibrate the um, Geiger-Muller tube to detect specific types of um, radioactive samples. And obviously, the more ionization that happens within the tube, the more an electrical current is going to flow. And again, it's counting the number of charges which are generated um, as it flows through the uh, tube. Now, that's a very, very simplistic um, version of the tube because we're not going to go into this in any great detail. But what I found on, the, um, on YouTube is a really good video, and I've linked it to this post, and it explains in detail exactly how the Geiger-Muller tube um, goes. And I'm going to allow um, the narrator in, in that video to explain the Geiger-Muller tube um, better because he can, he understands it a lot better than I have and there's some really nice animation in there So do click onto that post and check out how a Geiger Miller tube works now the final way of um, looking at uh, the presence of um, Radiation is using a cloud chamber now again. I've put this up on the post um, on YouTube so that you can um, Have a look at it, but uh, what this this does is it's the generation of um, the ionizing ability in a closed environment, and it's normally a cold environment, it's these, these cloud chambers are normally stored under um, dry ice, produces this cold environment, and we were able to pick up the radiation particles being generated. So basically, if I just switch it on, each of these white areas are liberation of radioactive particles which are going on within the actual um, chamber. So it's the radiation being emitted and then what we're seeing is the, um, these particles coming off. And really what we've, we've got, it's like um, it's watching a rocket go off and we're looking at the, the path of these radioactive particles as they fly through the, um, fly through the, the, the container. And uh, obviously if you do it in the dark, they're giving off um, light as well due to, due to those, that ionization, which we talked about earlier. It's really, really cool to look at. And if you go onto YouTube, there's loads and loads of little um, videos um, which are cool to, to watch and they're quite magnificent. There's also a great um, YouTube which I put on the, um, on the post of how to make your own um, cloud chamber in the, in the classroom. Um, so do, do have a watch of that. If you can get dry ice, then that's really, really useful. 
Okay, well, I hope you found that useful in that um, just running through the various different types of ways of detecting um, uh, radiation. Most of the things that we're going to be using will be the Geiger Miller tube, and um, I plan to put up a, a practical in the, in the lab using a Geiger Miller tube and showing you the various um, radiation that is um, emitted from specific um, types of particles. Okay, well, I, I hope you found that useful, and uh, I look forward to you joining me again. Bye for now.